Welcome back to Web Cafe AI. We do daily ChatGPT and AI videos for your personal and business life. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to leverage the app of Google Contacts and see how we can use it for AI and Zapier. If you're new to this channel, welcome to Web Cafe AI. We have taken on the task of looking at all 5,000 apps of Zapier and seeing how AI can be integrated to every single one. So make sure to subscribe to be a part of the journey here. You're going to learn a ton of stuff when it comes to AI automation. But for now, we're going to go ahead and create a news app and learn how we can do Google Contacts with ChatGBT. All right, so I'm going to come up here and let's rename this to Google Contacts Integration. As always, you'll be able to find the app in today's video in the description below. From here, we're going to go ahead and set up a trigger of Google Forms. And the context, essentially, of what I want to do in this video is we're going to basically get a form response. I want to use AI to understand the individual or the potential lead and then give a description when creating the client's information. So we're going to go ahead and say new form response. We're going to choose our courses count here at Web Cafe AI and we're going to go ahead and hit continue and then test this action. OK, perfect. So we got our response here and this is from one of our pseudo forms for launch services that we've created for past tutorials here on this channel. And we got a response here with all the readily available information that we would want to know about the potential lead that we found in our form here. From here, we're going to go ahead and create a chat GBT block. And then on top of that, let's go ahead and create one last block here, which is going to be a Google Contacts block. So we do Google Contacts. And then let's go ahead and just build out the Google Contacts block first and then the ChatGPT block. So from here, we're going to go ahead and say create contact. And hit continue. Choose the account that you want this associated with. And we can go ahead and insert some readily available information that we know right off the bat, which would be the name of the individual. So we got the first name is Tim Adams. You know, maybe we want to format this a little bit better. So let me just show you real quickly a formatter block we can do in this context. So we're going to go ahead and do format. And the purposes of formatting this is going to be essentially to make sure that, you know, first and last name show up as first and last name. It isn't just first name Tim Adams. Um, and then obviously you can use this skill whatever context you want to. So we're going to go ahead and do text and formatter. We're going to do an action of split. We're going to go ahead and hit continue here. Our input is going to be the name of the individual, which is Tim Adams. And then the separator or what essentially is going to make it. So what creates a new you know, segmented piece of variable is going to be space. We're going to go ahead and put space here. That's kind of how Zapier wants to identify space. So I'm not going to just put a regular space on your keyboard here. We're going to go ahead and make sure we do a segment index of all separate fields. This is going to ensure that these data points are separate. So what you're going to see right now is that we're going to get Tim Adams, which allows us essentially to grab the data separately. So what you'll see here is instead of us putting Tim Adams as the first name, let's format it correctly, put Tim and then our last name, which is going to be Adams here. Perfect. From here, we can add a ton of other stuff. So maybe we want to add the company that we've put into our form here. If we do have the company form, okay, it looks like that wasn't requested in this. We do have the address. So we can go ahead and do that real quick. Come down here, address. And then we can go ahead and just enter any other variable that's associated with the input. We can add stuff like related person, re relationship type. Maybe we want a custom field here where it's like client and we put cold, so on and so forth. And then we can add notes. So let's go ahead and go to the GBT part of this tutorial and see how we can leverage it in this context. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and open our chat GBT here. We're gonna do conversation continue continue and then we're gonna go ahead and say this was a potential client for our lawn services we're gonna do semicolon and we're gonna put in the name services requested do semicolon and then we're gonna do square footage because that is one of the uh, the variables that was requested in the form. So we have that here, so we can grab that here. So we're gonna go ahead and put in the name of the individual. We're gonna do Tim Adams. We do services requested for services requested and then the square footage, which when this context was 10,000. And then we're gonna go ahead and say this. We're gonna say generate a brief description of this client. And then we're gonna add a parameters block here and we're gonna say max for sentences. So it doesn't just keep going on. And then from here, we can go ahead and, you know, you can change your model for this context. We'll go ahead and change it up to GPT-4. And then as always, we can go ahead and add a memory key here if you want to make consistent outputs. 
But for this context, let's go ahead and just proceed with this and let's go ahead and see what it comes up with. All right, so as you see below me, we have the description generated. We got Tim Adams is a potential interested client in our lawn services. He is seeking weekly mowing with prices starting at $30 per visit. Fertilization services beginning at 40. His property has a total square footage of 10,000. As a dedicated client, Tim's lawn will be uh, will benefit from these services and maintain a healthy, attractive appearance. Obviously, we could give maybe a context block there saying this is not a client yet. This is a cold client. But for now, that is sufficient enough. We can come down here to our notes and then add that GBT response here. Hit continue. Then if I went ahead and tested that action and hit publish, we would now have an automated flow where essentially we get a lead coming in, we build out a Google contact, and then we get a nice like summarization of the potential contact. Now this would be very useful in very lengthy Google forms or different forms here. Imagine a Google form that had four pages and a ton of information. Now you can condense that down and add it to your notes and really understand who you're dealing with without having to do with the hassle of essentially internalizing all the information found within that form. If you feel like you learned something, make sure to like the video. It's completely free and it helps us here at WebCafe AI. If you found this information valuable, make sure to check out our other videos here on this channel, especially the playlist at the end of this video, which is going to show you an entire playlist we've created here where we're tackling all 5,000 apps found on Zapier and how AI can be leveraged with every single one. So if this type of stuff interests you, check out that playlist. But without further ado, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in. And yes, surprise. I'm an AI avatar. Make sure to explore more here at Web Cafe, where we demystify AI for your personal and business life. Until next time.